Alright, today is Thursday, April 15th, and this is a recap for the stock market activities today. We are still in the battle of decision making between which route will the market take to become the predominant theme for the market in 2021. Will we continue on the theme we started this year of higher yields? and appreciating inflationary reopening and value stocks? Or will it be going back to the theme of last year of lower yields and appreciating technology, growth, and stay-at-home stocks? To come up with a decision, the market evaluates three important dynamics, the virus, inflation, and treasury yields. And they are all linked together. So far, we have been doing significant progress in vaccination and reopening, and therefore unlocking the door for inflation to rise higher. And if inflation continues to rise higher, treasury yields will follow up and rise higher as well and that will lead us closer to the federal reserve tapering and tightening monetary policy if that takes place the bull run for the market will come to an end today one of these dynamics got shot and that's treasury yields so what happened today did we get any news regarding the virus perhaps locking the door for inflation to rise higher? Nope, we did not get anything, any update regarding the virus since pausing administering the vaccine from Johnson & Johnson. Likewise, did inflation go down? Did we get any data supporting that inflation is peaking or we are gonna trend lower? Absolutely not. If anything, today we received a slew of macroeconomics data supporting even higher inflation. So what did drive treasury yields lower today? Perhaps uh, commodity prices crashed today. Nope, commodity prices continue to rise higher based on higher inflation expectations. So the mystery, the puzzle is why did treasury yields dive lower significantly today? This is the question that we will attempt to answer throughout this video. I have the opinions of Wall Street market experts and my opinion regarding what happened today. But before we do that, we must ask the question, can the move in treasury yields today be trusted? Meaning, can we make any investment and trading decisions based on the move today? Meaning, is the move suggesting even lower prices to come for treasury yields? What would that do to certain sectors of the market, specifically the high multiple mania names? Because one would assume that in a day where treasury yields drop over 6%, percent registering the biggest loss since the beginning of the year one would think that that would be very positive to the high valuations mania names because that would be a confirmation of lower treasury yields to come but here is the catch we did not see that happen in the market today matter of fact the mania names for example palantir solar names ev names like neo xping etc these names actually managed to underperform today in addition to other richly valued stocks which happen to be popular with retail investors and they are also underperforming today point number two if the move in treasury yields today is legitimate and we are supposed to trust it and make investment and trading decisions based on the move today on expectations for lower yields then take a look at the heat map it should have been lit like a christmas tree meaning you should have seen technology specifically the software side and the mania names like Palantir, Tesla, NEO, etc., lighting up bright green with gains over 5, 6, 7, 8%. And you should have also seen the inflationary side of the market of financials, industrials, materials, energy, and defensives severely outperforming, lighting bright red down 5, 6, 7, 8% apiece. That did not happen. And actually, names poster boys of the inflationary trade, the likes of Freeport McMoran in materials, managed to score gains over 4% today, meaning the inflationary trade did not severely underperform and the outperformance today from big cap technology, software, high multiple names was not very convincing. Once again, the biggest drop in yields since the start of the year. We should have seen a bigger rally in the Nasdaq, technology stocks, high multiple stocks, mania stocks, and we should have seen massive declines in the inflationary trade. That did not happen, which put the mystery the puzzle and the question regarding the move in treasury yields today under the microscope with a big lens 
of skepticism. And by the way, I will tell you my opinion of what happened today. I will explain it to you from my perspective. We'll do that during the headlines of the day segment and the charts analysis. And the last thing before we start the coverage is the gold myth from the deflationary camp who said, yes, yields are rising higher. Commodity prices are rising higher, but the risk is not inflationary. The risk is deflationary because gold did not rise higher. As if gold is supposed to be this big, reliable indicator regarding inflation and it is supposed to be quote-unquote an inflation hedge and I told you that is bullshit gold hasn't been tracking inflation and Treasury yields since the 80s matter of fact it has been on an inverse relationship with Treasury yields so in a day like today where we saw Treasury yields pulling back significantly gold is rallying once again what does that tell you because the narrative today was that treasury yields are dropping lower because inflation expectations are being tamed so why is gold rallying higher on inflation expectations being tamed i think the picture is clear here the dust is settled for this argument gold is not a good or reliable hedge against inflation matter of fact it has an inverse relationship with treasury yields we will talk about that and a lot more. And here we go. The Dow Industrial Average closing in the green by 305.10 points or a gain of 0.90%. The Nasdaq closing in the green by 180.92 points or a gain of 1.31%. The S&P 500 also closing in the green by 45.76 points or a gain of 1.11%. And what about the sector's performance? For the day leading the pack at number one and capturing the gold medal is real estate a number two for the silver healthcare and a number three for the bronze technology meanwhile the only laggard for the day is the energy sector closing in the red moving on to futures once again treasury yields significantly lower today one would think the commodity prices collapsed not the case we saw gains in crude oil prices likewise in softs massive gain for lumber almost four percent in the green we also saw sizable gains for sugar oj cotton coffee meanwhile coca futures were flat what about metals once again gains across the board gold silver they are liking the action in the bonds market but we also saw gains for the most reliable indicator for inflation not gold but copper copper closing in the green once again we also saw gains for palladium and platinum futures what about meats we have a retreat here for lean hogs futures aka the big tech and more declines for both feeder and live cattle futures then we have grains we have gains for soybean futures along with wheat futures but the action was muted in canola and oats futures on the other hand we saw declines for rough rice and corn futures but perhaps the tailwinds for corn are still intact because we're seeing a slowdown for the seedings in the United States this season due to a cold frost, meaning that the shortage in corn will prolong and therefore pushing corn futures higher. Moving on to the big casino, the options market, and let's take a look at what happened today. Leading the pack at number one, Apple with about 1.4 million contracts traded today. About 77% of those were calls. At number two, AMD. AMD with over 770,000 contracts, and about 72% of those were calls. At number three, we have Tesla with a little over 650,000 contracts. About 57% of those were calls. What about today? Today's unusual activities starting with the ticker SPY for the S&P 500 and they are making a bearish bid here by buying the 340 puts expiration date May 28th with expectations that the SPY will drop over 18% by then, they paid about 50 cents a piece to enter this trade. All in all, bringing the total to about 2.4 million dollars what about the trade for the ticker qs quantum scape we have a new short seller called scorpion management whatever and they issued a research today calling quantum scape worse than theranos accusing it of uh, being a celebrity scam etc etc and that added pressure for the name to dive lower and they are betting on more pain to come 
for Quantum Scape because they're buying the 30 puts expiration date April 23rd with expectations that the name will drop over 15% by then. They paid about a buck and 30 cents a piece to enter this trade, all in all, bringing the total to about $1.3 million. What about the trade for the ticker ABNB for? Airbnb. This time they're making a bullish bet by buying the 185 calls expiration date April 23rd with expectations that the name will rise over 5% by then. They paid about a buck and 90 cents a piece to enter this trade, all in all bringing the total to about one million dollars. What about the trade for the ticker TAN, TAN? This is the solar ETF. Lots of pain recently in this name and many solar names. And they're betting on more pain to come by buying the 77 puts expiration date May 21st with expectations that the name will drop over 7% by then. They paid about two bucks and 15 cents a piece to enter this trade, which brought the total all the way to about one and a half million dollars. What about the trade for the ticker AAPL, Apple. Lots of bullish activities recently in the options market for Apple. And today we saw more and more call options buying more aggressive than the days before and here is one of those trades buying the 150 calls expiration date june 18th with expectations that the name will rise over 12 percent by then and they paid about a buck and 87 cents a piece to enter this trade for a total entry cost of about one million dollars and what about the ticker anf for abercrombie and fetch you like uh, tight shirts or is that two 1990s? Does it matter? Because they're betting on a revival for this zombie. By buying the 42 calls expiration date June 18th, with expectations that the name will rise over 6% by then, they paid about three bucks a piece to enter this trade, bringing the total all the way to about $1.6 million. Moving on to the headlines that shape the day, starting with macro news. What else? The main mystery of the day, the puzzle. Why did treasury yields collapse when we saw every single indicator and every piece of data we received today indicating a hot economy and more inflation we will get to that but first let's take a look at all the facts that we received today to illustrate for you that the move in treasury yields doesn't make sense at all even though the deflationary camp the Fed's apologists, perma bulls, Wall Streeters, the media and the Robin Hoodites will tell you that there is no inflation where is inflation? Is it here? Is it there? Where is inflation? There is no inflation. And today we got our confirmation that there is no inflation because treasury yields crashed. Ha ha ha. So let's take a look at the facts. And perhaps they are right. And the move in treasury yields today was merited by facts. I mean, after all, we are open-minded, aren't we? And we listen to all different opinions with an open mind. Let's start with the weekly unemployment claims perhaps that came a little higher than expected and therefore inflation expectations went down you know because bad news for the economy is actually good news for stanks these days and therefore the perma bulls are cheering covid 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 cheering for more bad news because that is the only hope they have against the higher inflation that will eventually lead to tapering and tightening monetary policy aka the game is over but nope the number was actually much better than expected and we are now registering the lowest weekly unemployment claims since the pandemic started a separate report showed that first-time filings for unemployment insurance plunged with the labor department reporting 576,000 new jobless claims for the week ended april 10th economists pulled by the dow jones expected the government to report another 700 and 10,000 filed claims for the first time during the week ended April 10th. That wasn't the case. The number was much better than expected, once again signaling higher inflation. But perhaps we have uh, other data that supports deflation, not inflation, and therefore treasury yields collapsed today. Like uh, retail sales? What about those? Retail sales exploded in March as stimulus checks hit bank accounts of millions of Americans. Retail sales rose 9.8% for the month 
the Commerce Department reported Thursday. That compared to the Dow Jones estimate of a 6.1% gain and a decline of 2.7% in February. So they were expecting 6.1%. We got 9.8%, much higher than the estimate, once again signaling higher inflation. Is this deflationary or is this inflationary? Of course, it is inflationary. But perhaps there were other data that we got today that supported deflation. Otherwise, why the hell did treasury yields drop lower? Maybe the manufacturing indices, the Empire State and the Philly Manufacturing Index, perhaps those came too cold or below expectations at least. Nope, New York, Empire State and Philly Fed factory indices jump in April. The New York hits 26.3 and the Philly Fed Index soared to 50.2, but rising prices seen. The Philadelphia Federal Reserve Reserve manufacturing index jumped to a reading of 50.2 in April from a revised 44.5 in the prior month. This is the highest level in almost 50 years. 50 years, you donkeys. Economists had expected a reading of 42 after the initial reading of March 51.8, according to a Wall Street Journal survey of economists. What about the New York? Federal Reserve Empire State Index rose to a reading of 26.3 in April, up from 17.4 in March, much bigger than expected. This is the highest reading since October of 2017. Economists had expected a reading of 20, according to the Wall Street Journal. We got 26. Point three, much harder, once again pointing to higher and higher inflation. Once again, is this deflationary or is it inflationary? I know, but it is transitory. And if it's not transitory, we got the tools, bro. I know. And manufacturers were under pressure of higher input prices. Price pressure were evident in both reports. In New York, input prices hit the highest level since 2008 while selling prices hit a record. In Philly, prices slipped only a bit after reaching a 40-year high in March. Once again, prices rising higher, that is inflationary. Furthermore, and this is the amazing correlation between the CPI core inflation and the New York Manufacturing Index. Yet more confirmation that inflation is going to significantly overshoot. The next question is, what's already priced into treasuries? Break-evens are priced off CPI expectations, and the one-year rate is 2.8. So if we hit 5%, as this chart suggests, my guess is that isn't priced. You take a look at the correlation. If the buyer prices paid rose all the way to the highs just prior of the financial crash in 2008 and 2009, then the CPI will also shoot all the way up to that level in the coming month, regardless of the cooking. So once again, yet another indicator suggesting higher inflation way higher than we even expect in the horizon. So once again, the question is, why did treasury yields dive lower today? Because inflation is all around us, from coal to ketchup. Even ketchup is facing shortage of supply. So once again, why the hell did treasury yields drop today? First, let's hear from Wall Street experts. Barron's says, bond yields are falling despite blowout retail sales data. Here is why. Treasury prices gained early Thursday and yields pulled back even after a pair of reports on the U.S. economy came in much stronger than expected. They go through the data we just went through. That isn't the typical bond market response to strong data. Treasuries are supposed to sell off on strong economic news and push yields higher, either from rising bond market inflation expectations or bets on tighter Federal Reserve policy. The market's Thursday morning move also breaks a trend from earlier this year, when treasuries posted their worst quarterly performance in four decades, thanks to expectations that the U.S. economic growth would rebound quickly from the COVID-19 pandemic. In other words, Thursday's morning's treasury market gains present a puzzle. Economic data is improving, so why aren't bonds selling off? There are a few possible reasons. First, there are signs that after the first quarter sell-off, global investors, asset managers, and pension funds have been buying long-term treasuries. Demand has picked up for treasuries. The 10-year yield is about 15 basis points below this year's high. 
and it could be that strong economic data simply was not enough to dissuade buyers. Second, the market's pricing already reflected strong expectations for economic growth in March. The first quarter sell-off left markets pricing inflation above 2.5% over the next five years and Fed hikes as soon as early 20. 23. Thursday's report may have not been enough to materially change investors' views. Third, while those reports on retail sales and jobless claims certainly indicate economic strength, they also included some hints that March's pickup in growth may not lead to a persistently hot economy with extra inflation. The spending came in a month when government stimulus checks were distributed, for one, and one core reading of retail sales data excluding sales of gasoline, autos, and other more volatile areas, showed a 6.9 monthly gain, below economists' 7.2% forecasts. There was a similar dynamic in Tuesday's report on consumer prices. Prices rose 2.6% from last year, but excluding volatile food and energy prices, they only climbed 1.6%. So now they're trying to bullshit their way and weasel around to say, oh yeah, we got some inflation data pointing that we have hot inflation to come, but they're below expectations and they don't expect inflation to last for longer. Here's another take from Peter Bukvar. It is apparent that the sharp rise year to date in bond yields have priced in the recovery and the current cost pressures. I just showed you from the relationship between the Empire Index and the CPI that we haven't priced anything yet. So this is a false take. Inflation has not priced in a lot of data because it is a lagging indicator. So this is a BS take from Bookvar. But here's what he says next. I've said before, we'll be in a 10-year yield range of 1.6 to 1.77% for the next few months when people realize that multi-decade cost pressures are not so transitory and then we'll get another leg higher in rates. That will also be a time where we'll be closer to the Fed talking about tapering, he added. So again, let's circle around and find bullshit excuses and bullshit answers to justify the unexplainable today. Throwing cold water at historic levels from economic indicators. Does it make sense? But they are trying to make sense of the unexplainable. And now they're sounding like a bunch of donkeys. There is another take, let's say from uh, people who don't trust the Federal Reserve, as most people would do. And they would say that the move in Treasury yields today was due to a manipulation from the Federal Reserve. All I know is that they are scheduled to buy about $80 billion worth of bonds starting today. But we don't have any facts or any data, any more details showing that the Federal Reserve increased bond purchasing today from the norm. We don't have any facts supporting that. So we go back to the question, why did treasury yields dive lower? Is it because the Wall Street explanation saying that oh, all of these uh, historic inflation measures are already priced in at a 10-year treasury yield of about 1.6%? Does that make sense to anyone? Of course not, at least anyone rational. So what is it? Is it due to Fed manipulation? Well, we don't have the facts. We don't have any evidence supporting that. So is there another explanation to why treasury yields dive lower today amidst the release of very hot economic indicators. Here is another take, a different one, from Jim Bianco. And you know, Jim has been uh, losing his mind as of late with the laser beam eyes and defending Kathy Wood, but still, we like Jim Bianco. Someday he will be normal once again. And Bianco says, did everyone forget the word short squeeze? Did we all forget how out of control bearish everyone was on bonds just two weeks ago, soon will announce the high yield for the 10-year has been hit 1.77%. That will set the stage for a move to 2% or more. What Jim Bianco is saying is ignore the market's action today in yields because it was due to short covering in bonds. And soon enough, we will be at 1.77% once again. That will pave the way for higher readings in treasury yields all the way north of 2%. Now, what is my take? on this whole thing that we witnessed today. My take is the breakdown in treasury yields today was technical in nature. Stop digging hard trying to justify the unjustifiable to make sense of the move today. It was technical in nature. That is it.
it. And I will explain that to you more during the technical analysis. But back to macro news, and we have more information regarding how Americans spent their new stimulus check. The noticeable change is that this time around, more people plan to invest the money or pay down bills, credit cards, and current financial obligations. We also noticed a spike this time around for non-essential spending, meaning that a lot of people viewed the recent stimulus payment as a cherry on top, not needed at all, and therefore that is going for non-essential spending, meaning that the consumer is now flush, paid off their debts, have extra savings that will unleash the pent-up demand and surge retail sales higher and higher, fueling more and more inflation. Matter of fact, Jamie Dimon of Chase Bank says U.S. consumers are coiled and ready to go with $2 trillion more in checking accounts. Now, after all of the data we just reviewed, can you still say with a straight face that the move downward in Treasury yields today was due to tame inflation data? or even that it is priced in? Can you say that with a straight face? Of course not. That once again questions the validity of the move. Moving on to market sentiment news, starting with the 21st century's tulip mania. This is the aftermath of the Coinbase IPO. And here we have Coinbase co-founder saying that this isn't the market top for cryptos. And of course, the tulip farmer said that this is not a market top for the tulip market. But the inside Insiders are scoring big and they're about to transfer their digital wealth in crypto, you know, the future bro, into that useless old uh, dead fiat currency, you know, the US dollar. And here we have the CEO of Coinbase watching his wealth increase all the way to $16 billion. This is a good racket for insiders, early entrants, early investors, angel investors, but a lousy deal for those of us chasing the mania in Coinbase. And who is buying this lousy deal from Coinbase? You guessed it, Tesla witch Kathy Wood of ARK Invest. There is a new shiny object, expect Kathy Wood to dump stocks and rush in and buy the new shiny object at any valuation. Mama Kathy loves the casino. It's not her money she's gambling with, so who cares? And Kathy Wood bought 246 million worth of Coinbase stock at the opening price. And we know that Coinbase closed down over 15% from the opening price. So, so far, Kathy Wood is down. She sold some Tesla and other good names like PayPal into it to fund her purchases of Coinbase. So far, Kathy Wood is down about 10% or more in this position. So far, it could rebound very soon. But once again, an illustration of the irresponsible gambling going on at ARK Invest. But if you are a Bitcoin bear, I got some good news for you. Because here it is, the first inverse Bitcoin ETF that will allow investors to be short Bitcoin futures. And this already debuted today at the Toronto stock exchange and here we have jim kramer of course he pissed off the crypto maniacs because uh, jimbo says phony money paying for real money and he disclosed that he was an investor in bitcoin and he decided to dump in exchange for that uh you know useless uh, old dying fiat currency and he paid off his mortgage and therefore jim kramer is saying phony money paying for real money in other words exchanging tulips with real money. You know that has uh, actual real value. More in sentiment news. You know the sentiment is not so hot so today, specifically with the Robin Hood it's the bros at TikTok and YouTube. You know, buy Palantir bro, buy uh, Plug Power bro to the moon. They were a hot item last year, but this year not so hot so because all of the main name came down crashing. And all of a sudden they're finding the market very frustrating, very difficult to navigate. You know, not that easy market last year where all you had to do is uh, pick a ticker out of a hat and you win, you score, you make money. This time around, you gotta be a stock picker. You gotta buy, uh, you know, real companies with uh, profits and stuff, good balance sheets. Because the bros on YouTube, of course, saying, oh, this market is frustrating and perhaps you should take a break, yada, yada, yada. If you are finding the market frustrating, then perhaps you did not invest in the market. Perhaps you invested in hopes and dreams and promises. Because had you stuck to 
good balance sheets, solid companies, real companies, not the hot shiny object that the donkeys are chasing over TikTok, YouTube, Snapchat, whatever. You'd be saying, what frustration? What's going on here? What frustrating? What are you talking about? The market is just fine. For example, contrast this chart of Microsoft. Is there any problem here? Is there any uh, frustration? Absolutely not. The stock continues to grind higher and higher and higher and higher. Solid, real company, check. Actual revenue and profits, check. Growth, check. Good balance sheet, check. So no problems whatsoever. Now contrast that with a garbage name that was so hot and popular among all of these YouTubers, TikTokers, the Robin Hoodiots and the likes. Plug Power, which is down almost 70% from the highs it made earlier this year 70 percent somebody bought at the highs and they're holding a massive bag of being down 70 percent that person will find the market extremely frustrating specifically in a day like this the dow is up s p 500 up the nasdaq is up but your mania stocks palantir plug power blink garbage are not participating because the bubble already bursted in these names but let's end the segment with a touch of sanity as we did last night showing you that strong balance sheet stocks have started to outperform once again. And here we have a flock back into the LQD, the investment grade bonds ETF. After the worst quarterly sell-off for investment grade bonds since 2008, investors are buying the debt again. They're accepting close to the least extra yield over rates in the post-crisis era to own the debt. And they are starting to pour money back into LQD. And here is another indicator telling us that what worked last year will not work as good this year. Moving on to corporate news. And let's start with, you guessed it, the souffle. The souffle is full of promises, false hopes and dreams, but they seldom deliver. For example, the robot taxis, the roadster, the full self-driving vehicles, none of that was delivered as promised. And here is another false promise. Cisco ordered 50 of Tesla's electric trucks, and that was all the way back in 2017. So far, Cisco has received zero, none of these trucks. They were never produced and never delivered. Another false promise by Reverend Elon and his culties. But I know the stock should be worth a trillion dollars because it's a monopoly, bro. Tesla is a monopoly. They're the king of EV. Robo taxis. Really? Is this monopoly? Because Chinese rival Xpeng Motors launches new car called the P5 with LiDAR for more driverless features. It will be priced cheaper than the Tesla Model 3 in China. Competition in the EV market is getting intense. And Xpeng Motors also looking to produce their own autonomous driving chips. But hey, Tesla's a monopoly, right? And here we have Ford. And Blue Cruise, the autonomous driving technology from Ford, completed a 110,000 miles trip. And Tesla CEO took a shot against Tesla and Reverend Elon Musk and criticized the company for using customers as lab rats for testing unfinished technology. And how is this for Monopoly? The Q4 e-tron from Audi will join the European lineup this summer. And here we have uh, beautiful pictures of the car, the interior, the exteriors. Oh, what a beautiful car. Oh, wait a minute. It looks like a Ninja Turtle. Never mind. But if you are confused with all of this uh, EV war, which stock should you choose? Which stock should you invest in? And you are looking for new tickers. I got you back because here it is, a bullet stock. Morgan Stanley analyst Adam Jones upgraded the company's stock and raised his price target from 61 to 96, a major upgrade. And this is a bullet stock that will benefit either way from the EV wars and the upcoming competition between car manufacturers because they supply the parts. And we are talking about Magna International, the ticker MGA. And what about Subway? Rumors are swirling that Subway is looking to sell itself. We explore the rise and fall of the world's largest fast food chain. My question is, is it going to be available as an NFT? The problem is that even if you buy Subway as an NFT and you choose to consume it uh, digitally, you are still going to need a lot of toilet paper, if you know what I mean. But rest assured, I got you covered because Krober, Krober, 
Kroger is employing robots and they're calling it a secret weapon against Walmart and Amazon. An army of robots that can fill a grocery order in a few minutes. I'm Long Kroger and I have been cheerleading for this name since last summer. The ticker KR in your face. Lastly, how about a teaser for the upcoming episode for the series Big Dumpers. Here we have uh, Sir Richard Branson and he dumped about $150 million worth of Virgin Galactic stock, aka Space, S-P-S-E. And Sir Richard is saying, is this as far as the donkeys are gonna get us? I thought they're getting us to the moon, bro. So I guess I'm just gonna dump right now and abandon the ship with the donkeys in it. Moving on to the heat map analysis and let's see what's going on today. Yields are crashing, so regional banks of financials should be crashing too, right? Wrong. Regional banks with modest losses, even with larger banks. Most of them managed to close in the green, with exception of Bank of America. BAC had earnings today, and we saw a reaction to earnings. And the dip, by the way, is to buy for Bank of America. Give it a few days and then buy the dip. And once again, yields crashed today. So one would assume that utilities and technology will be lighting up like a Christmas tree. Bright green, massive gains all over the place or out of the woods. Not so much. We saw modest gains, clear outperformance today, but not as much as one would have expected looking at the chart of the 10 year treasury yield. Likewise, if yields are crashing and inflation expectations are gone, then why did inflationary stocks in materials, the likes of Freeport McMoran, closed in the green today over 4%? You would think that Freeport McMoran might have crashed today, along with copper prices and commodity prices, looking at the chart of the 10-year Treasury yield. Because the narrative is, yields are dropping and crashed today because inflation expectations are poof, gone, disappeared. Do you even believe? this garbage. And to shed more light on the heat map, let's visit the themes analysis, starting with the reopening trade. Let's see how these names did. Mixed picture, all in all, with very modest losses, led by MGM Grand and Royal Caribbean. But we also saw gains for many other names. Now, the reopening trade is kind of bloated, because you have names trading at above pre-pandemic highs. Names like Disney, Hilton, Marriott, all trading above pre-pandemic highs. That's insane, and they will be corrected. But there are names within the reopening names that are still a bargain. For example, two names that I still own in my portfolio, Coca-Cola and Cody. What about the inflationary trade? With yields dropping down, where is the bloodbath that is uh, supposed to show up in these names? Where is it? It's non-existent. Meaning that once again, you have to take the move in yields today with a healthy dose of skepticism. Because all in all, the picture is positive for the inflationary trade. What about the deflationary trade? We should see bright green gains of 5, 6, 7, 8%. Not really. There are sizable gains for names like NVIDIA, DoorDash, Okta over 5%, but you have names like Square, Tesla, Peloton, Zoom, high multiple names with some gains, but not as much as one would have expected looking at the chart of the 10-year treasury yield. Likewise, we don't have a mania slide, but the mania names, the very hot high multiple stocks, specifically in the small caps and medium caps, severely underperforming today with a lot of losses. Take a look at names like Plug Power, Xpeng, Fuel Cell, Blink Charging, all of these names that are very popular with the retail crowd underperforming. These are the names that if you told me that treasury yields would drop over 6% today and the trajectory is lower, below 1.5%, I will be loading up in these mania names expecting a massive rebound. Not the case and therefore you have to take the action and look at it with a lot of skepticism. Moving on to the charts analysis, starting with 30 minutes chart of the SPY. What do we have here? We have a bullish breakout that continues to go on and on and on every day. Once again we're gapping higher and trading in another bull flag formation the reversal will happen in two scenarios in my opinion and we have discussed these before 
Number one, a gap lower overnight, a significant one from which the market doesn't recover. Number two, a gap in crap scenario. And I think we will get that at some point, perhaps sooner than we expect, where you see the SPY, the Qs, gapping higher in the morning, only to sell off all the way till the end of the day. Until then, the chart remains bullish. Likewise, for the continuous contract, a daily picture. We are still in a breakout, but we are getting extended from an RSI perspective. And we should be looking for a pull back now regardless of this mania of popping higher and gapping overnight let me show you a little bit of market symmetry another perspective that you have to take into consideration the pattern that we're seeing right now is eerily similar to the one we saw back in august of 2020 of low volume market grinding higher and higher every single day sometimes gapping higher and as you see right before the pullback the reversal we had a massive green candle shooting higher and it was a massive gap up day for the spy and the triple q's during that day no one would have expected an upcoming pullback what are you talking about we're breaking to all-time records high look at apple look at microsoft look at this look at that but right away the very next day we saw the pullback and the correction from the highs so the correction will come sneaky you will be under the illusion that we have higher prices to go before the pullback only to be surprised by the pullback coming out of the blue we have many catalysts for an upcoming pullback for example corporate earnings with these elevated valuations and pretty much every single stock at all time highs, with exception of the mania names, will the market receive earnings with open arms, giving the elevated levels stocks are trading at right now? That is the question. And if we do indeed pull back, what are we looking for? We're looking for the gap we left open on this ride higher and perhaps going all the way back to 3,960. What about the Qs? 30 minutes chart we have a similar story here the chart on a breakout gapping higher overnight with another bull flag formation and you know how to spot the reversal gap and crap that is the preferred method because it will be a solid reversal signal if that happens expect us to go all the way back from the q's perspective to the level of 323 it's not gonna happen in one shot we have many stops and many gaps to fill on the way but perhaps that would be the destination for the pullback what about the cues from a continuous contract perspective the daily chart once again as i've told you the level of 13,900 should be sticky you shouldn't be blasting above that level without facing resistance or going back and forth back and forth for at least a few days and this is what's going on right now can we make any conclusion here? Is there a pattern that we could extract from this formation? From a candlestick charting perspective, this is what it's called a stick sandwich or a stick pattern. And usually what happens is that the color in the middle will be the next breakout, meaning that if you are a believer in this uh, stick sandwich formation, the NASDAQ futures should be pulling back starting tomorrow moving on to the iwm we are still in the bull flag formation that we started yesterday no damage done to this formation whatsoever remember we have a gap at 218 which happens to be support the chart could go all the way down there but remember the iwm is being pushed higher by the reopening names and some of the mania names the likes of gamestop so the destination of small caps the russell 2000 is dependent on the outcome for the travel names the reopening names Names, in addition to some YOLO names like GameStop, AMC, etc. And the line in the sand can be found in the daily chart for the rut, the Russell 2000. And here it is, the level of 2264. Closing above that level from a weekly perspective will signal a bullish outlook for the IWM, the Russell 2000, and higher prices to go. And we are watching an imminent crossing in the MACD one way or the other. We're still in indecision land right now, but there is a breakout one way or the other. We have a negative divergence in the RSI. Breaking that negative divergence will also signal that the breakout will come to the upside in the Russell 2000. Absent of that, closing the week under 2264 will mean that the breakout will take place to the downside. Moving on to the dollar index. The dollar index continues the pullback without making a lower low. So, so far, so good. The dollar index 
can bounce higher once again. But if you do what yields did today of making a lower low, then the chart is in technical trouble. Perhaps the trend will reverse and you will see lower reading in the dollar index. Now, I happen to believe that this bounce candle that we saw today could take us all the way to challenge the level of 92 before the Dixie decides on its next direction. What about gold? Gold blasting higher today, finally breaking above 1750 so did the dollar index collapse today not really the dollar index pretty much flat and rebounding just slightly higher so what was the catalyst for gold to blast above 1750 the answer is the collapse in treasury yields today so tell me again how is gold is a hedge for inflation and how gold is a predictor of inflation and if gold is not rising higher, then inflation is not going to rise higher and the risk is deflationary. Do you need any more proof that gold is actually rallying under tampered inflation expectations? And if inflation expectations rise higher, gold will drop again. I know it doesn't make sense. It's against the traditional and the consensus take. But the facts support what I'm saying. Take a look at the correlation between gold and the 10-year treasury yield it has been inverse pretty much going back all the way to the 1980s shifting to digital gold bitcoin what's going on here in crypto mania land if you remove the ticker and you remove all the circumstances and you show me this chart i will tell you that this chart is a buy you buy it with both hands number one the series of higher highs and higher lows remains intact we have a positive crossing in the macd indicator signaling a surge in momentum and we have a reversal in the negative divergence in the rsi so this chart has a breakout higher imminently in my opinion and if that is the case and bitcoin will surge higher then perhaps coinbase will also benefit and this is for the donkeys who keep telling me that i'm too bearish on bitcoin and i'm missing out bro no no no, no. differentiate between the sentiment and the charts the sentiment this is a tulip mania an insane orgy with no supporting fundamentals whatsoever but the technicals the psychology and the momentum is on the side of bitcoin to rise higher you can say both you don't have to be a culty all in on one side of the trade or the other moving on to the chart of the day the 10-year treasury yield and bear with me here because they are saying that the break in treasury yields are due to fundamental reasons the likes of inflation coming lower than expected we know that's a joke or that treasury yields already pricing in the current inflation and this is why we saw a pullback in yields today we know that that's also bullshit because the correlation between the empire state manufacturing index and that is just one correlation by the way is perfect with the core cpi and the empire state manufacturing index is shooting higher to the highest levels since 2009 meaning that core cpi will have to follow through now there are other theories on why yields dive today from fed manipulation to jim bianco saying it's short covering in my opinion it was just technical in nature i gave you the support 1.622 basis points you can say it's 1.620 basis points doesn't matter it is in or around that level if you break the support you will open the floodgates for trading much lower i already told you that that if we break the support of 1.622 basis points we could dive all the way back to one and a half percent and then bouncing higher again but the long-term trajectory of yields is higher we heard a lot of orgasms a lot of jerking off from uh, CNBC, the Robin Hoodits, the deflationary camp, and the likes. Looking at this chart today, saying that we will see even lower readings in treasury yields and inflation expectations will just disappear because the market will believe it is transitory. Ask yourself a question. I'll give you about five seconds. Are you really that stupid? Because if you are, then there is no point to talking to you at all at all and what do you know all of the jerking off the tissues the vaseline all of that gonna go away and yields will bounce higher again and when yields bounce higher all of the people who are celebrating today saying that the market decided to believe the federal reserve that inflation is transitory and already priced in they will turn around and say oh i guess inflation is not transitory after all super thankful once again in my opinion this was a technical breakdown in treasury yields yes we had some supporting factors for example the success of the 30-year bond auction but here we had a supporting level a very important level 
0.622 basis points. And we saw the mini bear flag formation. This is a technical break in nature. It will be reversed again and you will see treasury yields surging higher once again. If anything, this is a buying opportunity for the TBT. Now, if yields dive down all the way to 1.5% once again, you bet I will be loading on TBT shares with both hands. Now, what happens to the TLT bond prices when yields collapse? We saw a big pop higher in the TLT and it stopped at the Fibonacci level of around 141. Now, the line in the sand is 139. This is the number that the TLT has to close above tomorrow. To solidify the thesis that treasury yields have lower readings to visit. And what about the VIX? The VIX remains stable here, declining by just a notch. And I am building a position in the VIX for an upcoming pop. Take a look at the MACD indicator. There is a crossing imminent. And all of that energy that has been building up on the way down will be released higher. And I do believe the VIX will visit the resistance of 20 once again. And of course, the line in the sand is 35.70 in the RSI. If we go down to 35.70, then you bet I will be buying the VIX with both hands. Moving on to Apple. Apple continuing to rise higher in this bullish breakout. A series of bull flags leaving gaps open on the way higher. Now, notice that the bulk of the gains were already made from this leg higher because the chart is starting to plateau, meaning that we are looking for a reversal because the stock has been an excellent outperformer the last three weeks and you will see profit taking before we head to earnings season specifically for Apple. Tomorrow, we have options expiration. That will be very important to watch because the reaction in Apple stock will be very important. We saw a historic put-to-call ratio for Apple in the last few days for the trade expiring tomorrow. If the stock surges higher, then you know that these calls are being exercised and traders and investors are looking for exposure in Apple prior to earnings. But if you see Apple pulling back, then you know that these contracts are being closed without interest in holding Apple before earnings. What about the souffle, Tesla, what's going on? Here are my numbers. We have the gap resistance at 781.30. The chart reversed before closing that gap, which is a bearish signal. And we went all the way down to the support of 720. Now the line in the sand is not closing below 679 from a weekly perspective. If you don't do that, then Tesla gets another shot to closing the gap. Absent of that, breaking the support of 720 and heading to the trajectory of breaking 679 from a weekly perspective will be a bearish confirmation. But once again, we have earnings coming up very soon. We're not expecting the stock to move higher or lower substantially before earnings. We can have the calm before the storm in anticipation of earnings. But at the same time, option premiums will start to heat up due to the increase of implied volatility. What about Fibonacci's numbers? They're very close to mine. Fibonacci missed the gap and had the resistance at the levels of 763 but other than that the support of 720 pretty much identical to my level and then we have the line in the sand at the level of about 678 my number is 679 pretty close so i am pretty much in alignment with the fibonacci numbers and if you want to day trade the name now you know what levels you have to look out for. But for me, I will construct a trade for Tesla to cash in and exploit the upcoming rise in implied volatility and options premiums. Moving on to the conclusion of this video. Once again, this is one of those days that you say WTF, what's going on? Because throughout the week we have received a slew of macroeconomics data suggesting that inflation will start to heat up even more. And perhaps we are underpricing inflation not overpricing so why did yields dive lower and what will be the next move in my opinion i do not trust the move in treasury yields today and i saw that as an opportunity to buy tbt shares betting that yields will rebound higher because the facts are supporting higher yields if the facts change that's a different story the other thing is the explanation for today's move in yields i presented you with the take from wall street i presented you with takes from the deflationary camp i presented you with takes from analysts 
like Jim Bianco, and I presented you with my own take of what was behind the decline in treasury yields today. And in my opinion, it is technical in nature and it will be corrected very soon, with yields bouncing higher once again because the facts are still intact. That's all I got for you tonight, and I will talk to you again tomorrow. If you found the information presented in this video helpful, please subscribe, press the like button, the notification button, and follow me on social media.